Now, Simon Gregson has played Steve McDonald on Coronation Street for 34 years. Astonishing. Behind the scenes, though, Simon's revealed that he was struggling with anxiety. Oh, for about two decades, wasn't it, love? It's as long as that. Well, was it from when you were? Was it from when you first got the part? Yeah, well, about 2015, um, it, it, it had kind of come to its head, really. Yeah. The, you know, the whole anxiety thing. Because I had no idea what it was. Well, it's your reality, isn't it? So you don't know. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And I, I just kept getting really ill, and, and it, like these mystery illnesses, you know, the papers call it. Mm. And uh, I kept getting checked out. I was having heart scans. I was having brain scans. Uh, they thought at one point I had some uh, kind of vertigo, uh, all these horrible uh, ailments. Mm. Uh, and then eventually I went to go and see uh, uh, my local GP and a psychiatrist and I started from the beginning. I started from the beginning while I was born. <laughs> uh, all this kind of stuff. And he went, you've had an anxiety disorder and you've had it for a long, long wow. time. Because you were so young when you got the part, you were still at school. And, yeah, and back I was a then, baby. I know you were, you were a baby and it wasn't easy, it's never easy to be, and especially with a show like Cody, no. that you know, virtually everybody watches, you know, especially then. And, and you're kind of, nobody helps you, nobody thinks. No, I mean, you, I all the people that come into it now, you know, they take it off to a room and they're told, look, this will happen, there'll sure. be a press intrusion, your life will change. Being famous, for want of a better word, that'll change your yeah. life. But when, uh, when we started, there was none of that. No. So you just left to deal with it on your own, and we kind of became massive overnight. Mm. And it was uh, it was a lot to deal with. You yeah. Know? Well, you're still at school trying to yeah. be that person, yeah. and then it's really hard. And it was the late eighties, early nineties, and now being you know on TV in the public eye, I think it's a lot easier than it was then. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It was, I, it was all I, a bit I, exactly weird. what you're seeing. And the anxiety, as you said, it made you ill. It manifested itself in other illnesses as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because it it it. it, it it's an awful disorder. Um, when it was at its worst, what it would do is that your little finger and this finger here, they'd go completely numb. Your side of your face would go numb. There's like a tunnel vision. You're completely not yourself. You are inside, but you, you can't you can't bring yourself out. Right. Uh, you feel sick, you feel dizzy, and your heart feels like it's coming out of its chest. Jeez. It's, it's hor completely debilitating. Oh, it's horrible. Like sort of panic attacks you would get as well. Well, I mean, it is. That yeah. is exactly it. Exactly. I when it came to her, you know, to her head is when I rang my boss and said, look, I'm in the car, but I can't. I can't get off the drive. Jeez. And it was, I mean, how are you uh, supposed to be awful. able to do your job? You can't when you're like that. Well, that was the weird thing, because for a long time I was doing you're my job. Coping. And, yeah. um, you know, it's awful. But, you know, it happens to everyone in all walks of life. And it's completely invisible. Yeah. So my, my goal is to uh, talk about it, you know. Yeah, and, it's really good that you are, because I think it really does help other people. Because mm. they're sitting there going, hang on a wee minute, I feel a bit like that, so maybe I should go get help. I think help. a lot of people are living with it and don't know what it is. Yeah. Because as soon as it was labelled, somebody said, as soon as somebody said, this is what it is, mm. a lot of it went, because I'm like, right, now I know what it is. Because right. a lot of the struggle was, why am I feeling like this? Yeah, exactly. What is this? Did you get help yourself, or did somebody have to say to you, you... I went to go and see the GP, yeah. uh, and then um, ITV brought a doctor in who was Did they? Like... I was going to say that about Cory, because Cory's your second family. Yeah, they um, were brilliant. And they've been really supportive. Yeah, they got this amazing doctor in who works with the Royal Navy and the Royal Family, and he, and he was lovely. And he went, six months off, this is crazy. Right. And, um, so, yeah, I went, I, I, I got myself a therapist who's British, he's like now one of my closest friends, a sort of psychiatrist. And uh, I hit the gym, you know, and I ate properly because <laughs> it's, it's only because I found it fascinating. As, as I was getting better, I found it, the subject fascinating. Yeah. How the brain works sure. and how it's directly linked to your stomach. So I've been kind of researching it. I mean, I'm no guru at it, you know No, what I mean? but you've lived it. You've lived it, so that gives you that experience. Yeah. And it, it's something that I think really, you know, you, you can't underestimate the good that you talking about it can do. But I'd love to see you doing something, because I'd like to see how that impacts on your life and how it has. You know, you've got kids, and they must have seen you. Dad's not quite, you know, yeah, not quite himself. Yeah, well, I think that's you know, why like it that. started to get worse, because the kids were noticing in it. Mm -hmm. And then they were kind of talking about being anxious. Mm. And then that was even more worry. You kind of train your brain to worry, so you've got to retrain it not to worry. Right. Oh, so that's interesting. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's crazy. How was it, it then when your character, Steve, went through depression in Coronation Street? How was that for well, this, you? Well, this was the weird thing, because when Stuart, who was the producer at the time, told me about it, I was like, oh, this couldn't have come at a worse time. I don't feel right. But in a weird way, because I had to do a scene where I had to have a panic attack. I remember, yeah. So I thought, well, I'll walk this. <laughs> Could I have a panic attack? 
I couldn't have one. So Gosh. from having like 10, 11, 12 a day for no reason and it being completely awful, I couldn't have one when I wanted one, which is, that's when, that's when I thought, this is all psychosomatic. Mm. This is, this mm -hmm. is interesting. What was the reaction to that storyline? What did you get? When the you reaction just... was, was, was one uh, which was brilliant because usually, you know, like when lads come over to you in, you know, in, in a pub or a club, you're like, right, this is trouble. But they were like saying, you know, can I have a quick word? I was like, yeah, go on. And they're saying, thank you so much. You know, after watching that storyline, I went wow. to get help. I'm a better person now. I feel so, so it was great. You know, it was really good. God, so, that's fantastic. Yeah. And again, that's something. I think you should do a documentary. I'm in a mood today of sorting you know, everybody that's out. That's the end game, you know, to try and, <laughs> you know, to try and, you know, make people aware of it and do a lot more research into it. You know, because even if you could just help one person, exactly. then, you know, you've done something But it would be good. fascinating to, to watch your whole, you know, your whole sort of story. Dr Amir is with us. Amir, come and sit down, come sit down. Don't be over there. Yeah. Come sit down. Because we've talked about this a lot, haven't we? And, and Amir is very much the same as you. Oh, yeah. Absolutely same as you, Simon, that you've got to talk about this. And it's great, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, all the things Simon was saying there, retraining your brain. Because when you are anxious and having stress, your brain will look at things to try and make you more stressed, to make sense of that oh, stressful awful, situation. Oh, yeah. The thought, you know, the fear of having a panic attack brings yeah. on a panic attack. Absolutely. And then you get in this rhythm of it, and it's hard to get out because yeah. you've, you've gone so far down the road with it. That's it. You've got to try and... Come out. Yeah. Talking about it is key. And some of the yeah. other things you were saying, exercise for those endorphins and endocannabinoids that this make you feel better. Yeah. And you mentioned your stomach. The food we eat is so important. Ultra processed foods will make us feel worse mood wise. Things like omega 3, vitamin D is yeah. good for our mental health as well. So, all of those things together, combined with things like talking therapy, perhaps medication, is the way well, to sure. manage it. Everybody's anxiety. different, aren't they? It's yeah. all going to yeah, be. I think you different know, things work for different people. Exactly. Yeah, the exercise definitely works for me. For me, because to get my heart rate up for a reason, hmm. rather than it be 130, 40 for no reason. But that's scary. That's that it's, awful, it's yeah. frightening, yeah. actually. It is scary and a bit overwhelming. And it's fantastic you've come out the other side, but you're always aware. If you know, if you, it's always you there, always, but that's know, good that you but know you're able to let it wash through you now. Exactly, rather than you've got all these coping mechanisms and everything. Yeah. Right, okay, so we've got to do. Jo I'm, I'm sorting things out today, Amir. Yeah, mm -hmm. do a documentary. Yes, or a wee oh, book, yeah. or both. I just, I just think it would be really important. I just think it's good to highlight it because I genuinely feel that because I had no idea what it was. Mm -hmm. I, I just think there's a load of people out there that are in the same boat, so it'd be good to get it out there so people yeah. are aware of it, know what it is. And the whole science of, of the brain, how the different parts of your brain. There was a great book called The Chimp Paradox that I read. Brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, the more people that are aware of it, it will really help some people, so. No, it does. Listen, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me. You're so easy to talk to. So and are keep, you. And keep doing what... <laughs> you keep... should do this for a living. <laughs> <laughs> keep doing what you do. Keep doing what you do. And we'll see you in Korea, of course. Absolutely. And uh, more help, loads of support. If you've got any sort of anxiety, any problems, please, please, please don't sit at home and sit on it. Do what Simon did and get some help. Right, Dr Amir is going to stay with us because after the break, we're going to be showing...